This House approved the procurement, public procurement and asset disposal regulation 2020 that came into effect in July 2020. With this regulation, it's now easier for procuring entities to meet the specified requirements of bilateral and multilateral agreements on technology and knowledge transfer, local content and employment quotas, among others. For smooth implementation of the regulations, we have conducted capacity building in all 47 counties. I therefore direct procuring entities to fully comply with these regulations. Mr. Speaker, in order to ensure efficiency in procurement process and facilitate access by micro, small, and medium enterprises, the government has reviewed consolidation policy on procurement of ICT equipment and related services. In this regard, procurement of ICT equipment and related services will be decentralized to various ministries, departments, and agencies with effect from 1st July 2021. Mr. Speaker, last year, we began the process of automating public procurement through an end-to-end -end electronic procurement system. So far, we have developed an implementation strategy that re-engineers all public procurement processes, including functional and technical requirements. In order to actualize this initiative, 31st December 2021 will be the final date for rolling out the electronic government procurement system and, and therefore disc uh, discontinuation of the manual procurement processes. In this regard, the government will realize savings as a result of greater efficiency, reduced operational costs, enhanced transparency and accountability through increased bidding participation. Mr. Speaker, to support our local contractors and the construction of infrastructure projects, we have proposed changes to the contracting framework through the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Bill 2020. The bill before this House proposes, among others, to allow award of contract to multiple bidders. This, indeed, will support local farms and has raised the delivery of services. Mr. Speaker, given the prevailing business environment with the adverse impact of COVID-19 pandemic, there's an urgent need to evaluate the financial position and governance of key state corporations and institutions. It is in, the, in this respect that the government is exploring targeted reforms to strengthen these institutions, including public universities. Mr. Speaker, in the interim, the government pro it provided financial support to strategic institutions, including Kenya Airways, Kenya Power and Lightning Company, and Postal Corporation.